This is Tyler Wist here at the ESA 2010 meeting, and I'm interviewing Chris Marley. And uh, he likes to work with insects. I do. He didn't start out that way. Nope. Tell me about how you were afraid of insects at the beginning. Uh, phobic of insects from my youth. Uh, worked in, in fashion and design for, uh, for about 12 years and ended up living and working in about 35 different countries. And uh, had a lot of really bad uh, bug experiences. Nice. They kind of forced me to confront this this phobia to some degree, and um, um, as a as a with a background in design and fashion, um, I started looking at insects kind of from a design perspective, and really fell in love with just their form, their structure, their mechanics, their color, and uh, began designing using insects as a medium. Awesome. So would you say that insects are fashionable? I think they're becoming so. <laughs> they're becoming fast. <laughs> you know, honestly, insects have, have come in and out of fashion for hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, you know, all the way from Elizabeth in England, you know, where, where uh, Urania rifeus is a, the uh, sunset uh, 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 day flying moth was used in creating jewelry. Um, and jewelry has been used even actually longer than that. So it's kind of come in and out of fashion, but I'm, I'm working on bringing it back. Nice. So, Chris, you take insects and you turn them into artwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, your presentation was the first of the plenary talks. Yes. And uh, can you maybe tell me what your favorite insect is to work with? Um, not it wouldn't be my favorite to work with. I'll get to that. But my okay. favorite to to hunt and to see in the wild is uh, probably the giant damselflies, uh, Megaloprepus and Microstigma. Um, they are uh, they're just amazing to see. They're the slowest flying insects in the world. They look like they're going to drop out of the sky. They're just barely moving. And, um, wow. and they're, they're great spider hunters, which is also a plus for me. And so uh, I just love I just love watching them. They're they're very hard to catch. And they're very uh, uh, very infrequently that you can find them. But uh, but they're amazing to see in the wild. And then as far as working with, I probably the Bucrestids, the metallic woodborne beetles. Um, I can see such why. Such a huge yeah huge variety of color and um, and even texture. And uh, just a mosaic of just just Bucrestids is breathtaking. Awesome. Now, your company and your book are both titled Pheromone. Right. Can you tell me how that fits into the uh, theme of your work? Sure. Well, pheromones, you know, I mean, when it comes to mammals, the science can be a little bit hokey with regards to pheromones. But with regards to insects, they're really, really the chemical stimulants that they're the only thing that the insects have to fight one another, uh, for the most part. Um, and so, uh, and so there's there's a real um, there's a real science there of of, um, of a, a chemical attractant uh, between insects, and then for me. You know, there's that chemical attraction can have an effect on humans as well. In that, uh, it, with a, a visual um, presentation, that, that's that's really beautiful. So I try to combine that that uh, that feeling for attractant insects, pheromone. I don't know, it just kind of clicks. I like it. I like it. Now, your work is beautiful, to say the least. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now. One piece of artwork. What would go into that? Can you describe the stages to develop it? Well, um, there's quite a few stages actually. Um, first, the uh, the the concept. Um, mm. I do some conceptualizing on the computer, but for the most part, what it will do is is uh, uh, either from the field of my collecting or uh, collecting of any of my catchers, uh, we'll look and find. We'll look to see what is actually available. You know, first of all, we have to have the raw materials. Okay. So we'll we'll look to see what species we we have uh, available to catch. What we can get in some quantity um, and then I'll design uh, with actual specimens I'll, I'll make the prototype and then I have to train my artists that I employ to reproduce the prototype uh, or at least the feel of the prototype and so if I'm not making the piece one of my employed artists is making it and then each piece is, is uh, graded by me so if it doesn't uh, it once it goes through all the stages of execution <clears throat> it has to pass the final test and I've got, unfortunately, an entire warehouse full of pieces that haven't passed the final test. So there's a lot that goes into it. Um, uh, once it's designed, once it's executed, it has to be hermetically sealed. We use all archival materials because we have a lifetime guarantee on all of our pieces, and so they have to last forever. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's kind of kind of the steps that we that we go through. And like I said, in the end, I'll grade each piece if I haven't made it myself, and then they ship out to our stores. Wow, what if you made one yourself and you didn't pass the grade? <laughs> I've got, uh, I've got a warehouse full of those as well. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, you mentioned in your presentation that you had reproductions as well. Well, um, there's two different kinds of reproductions. I mean, there's the original pieces, that, the original prototypes that I actually design, that I actually design and create. Um, and then a reproduction from that would be uh, another three-dimensional original piece that mirrors 
the prototype mm. that is not that is not uh, done by me, but is done by one of my artists. Or uh, we also do um, limited edition uh, G clay prints on canvas or on art paper. Those are reproductions as well. How would I get a hold of something like that? Uh, PheromoneGallery.com. Okay. Or track you down in Salem. Yep. Nice. Yep. Or we have uh, about three or four hundred stores we sell through all over the country. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. You're I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, on behalf of ESA 2010 in San Diego, thank you, Chris Marley. Absolutely. It's an honor.